hello! What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and hopefully, you guys have been following along because I have been doing my Marvel movie marathon in preparation for the road to Civil War. I'm so excited! I can't wait till I get to it. Here, I am talking about Thor: The Dark World which was a 2013 film. It was a sequel to Thor, but this took place after the Avengers. And let's talk about Chris Hemsworth as Thor, because I love Chris Hemsworth as Thor. I think it was great casting. I think it was great in the role. And I've loved how he portrays Thor each and every movie. My only issue with Thor here is that there's not a lot of character depth. He's just, he's Thor. He's Thor. Nothing really changes as far as he doesn't have much of an arc. Uh, sure, you could say that he's he's contemplating whether or not he wants to be king of Asgard. He was supposed to be king in the first movie, and he seemed like he wanted it bad then. But ever since he went to Earth, met Jane, he's been in love with her. In this movie, it's kind of him giving up being the king. I guess that's a big thing, but maybe there's so many other interesting things going on in this film, and I wish it was Thor. Because I still feel like up until this point we haven't really had a great Thor character movie just yet. Uh, but he's still fine in the role, though. He has some good action scenes. Like, I like the bit at the beginning where him and the Warriors 3 and Sif are going to fight, uh, trying to stop this this war going on on a planet and Thor quickly destroys a rock monster and he's being a little cocky not as arrogant as when he was at the beginning of the first movie but still he's confident so I do like that uh, Natalie Portman as Jane Foster she too is kind of just here as much as I liked her in the first movie because she was very sciencey she was very intelligent and she's smart still, I guess, here. It's just, she's really just here to be a plot device. She's really just here to have something bad happen to her. Uh, like when this weird alien goo goes into her blood, her system. And then it's not till then when Thor finally decides, oh, maybe I should go check on her. Because I was here in the Avengers. I even went and got shawarma with them after the battle in New York. But he never went and... Uh, sought Jane, never talked to her. I do like the bit when she goes up to him and she slaps him and she's pissed about it. Uh, but, I don't know. Jane, Jane doesn't really have a lot to do here either. It was interesting that they brought her to Asgard, but why was she really there? She was there because of what happened to her. Uh, but I mean, like, story-wise, was she just there for Sif to see her for the first time and give her that jealous look? Because Jamie Alexander as Sif is, once again, wasted in this movie, more so in this movie. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why we're not doing more with Sif, because I really like her as Thor's wife in the comics, but I guess, I don't know, will we ever get there in the movies? Doesn't seem like that's top priority. Kat Dennings as Darcy is once again one of my favorites. Uh, she's very funny. She is every time. Like I know sometimes it's like we're on Asgard and a lot of mythology, uh, even relationship stuff is going on with Thor and his family and his brother. And then we cut to Earth. And I know some people are like, no, don't cut back to Earth, right? No, let's stay there. But Darcy is in those Earth scene so I can forget for that. I laugh each and every single time she calls Thor's hammer meow meow. <laughs> like I, I, It's funny. It is. Uh, Stella Skarsgård as Dr. Selvig. I don't love the fact that he's a raging mad scientist naked guy running around. Like it makes me laugh. I chuckle and stuff sure but I don't I don't know. I did like his character in the first movie. He was a lot more straightforward there. I guess they just figured let's do something with him after he was mind controlled by Loki. It is funny that he, that uh, Selvik has had this weird mental reaction to Loki's scepter, but Hawkeye never lost his mind, I don't think. Tom Hiddleston as Loki. This is Loki's movie. I will say that as much as I don't like dislike this movie as much as some people do. A lot of people have this on like 
the low, low end of their Marvel Cinematic movies. And I can understand that. In fact, rewatching all of these movies, this may be uh, my lowest one on the list. But it's not terrible. And a lot of the reasons why it's not terrible is because when Loki's on the screen, he just he chews up the scenery. Uh, it, it, it becomes all about him. That's when the movie becomes fun. That's when some life gets brought into the movie. I remember at the time I read that this movie did, originally wasn't supposed to have this much Loki in it. It was just supposed to show him uh, imprisoned, and then that was really it. But Joss Whedon came in, looked at the script, and said, this needs to be funnier. Let's put more Loki stuff in here. So that's where you get the bit of Loki and Thor actually working together, and Thor wants to trust him, but he can't trust him, and Loki's trying to say, yeah, you can trust me, whatever. Uh, the scene when they're walking down the hallway and Loki is changing forms and eventually turns into Captain America and that just, that bit is the funniest moment in the movie. It got the biggest laugh in the theater. It's one of the only big laughs in, uh, in this movie, I can admit that. But still, just that alone will save this movie for nothing else. Uh, some people don't love the fact that he, he fakes his death. And I think people don't like that more so because a lot of the Marvel movies have done that. Uh, Coulson came back from the dead to do the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. Nick Fury uh, faked his death and went to Soldier. I'm sure there's been a couple of other ones, but Loki does it here. And I get it. I get it. I can see if people are saying death is, is becoming something that's not to be feared in the Marvel movies. But this is something Loki would do and can do. Out of all the characters that could make an illusion to make it look like he died, Loki would be the one to do it. And I actually love the payoff for that. He fakes his death to then go off at the end of the movie, pretend to be Odin, and is now king of Asgard. And that's fascinating. Like, if there's nothing else to make you look forward to another Thor movie, it's that happening. Idris Elba as the gatekeeper. I know, I know, I don't love it. I still don't think he gets enough to do here, but at least they gave him a pretty cool action scene where he suspects that the invisible ship is going past Asgard Bridge, and then he runs up to it, knocks one down, but of course there's like a hundred more. Uh, still too short, still not enough. Christopher Eccleston as Malakaf, who's the main villain, the leader of the Dark Elves. I am aware of him from the comics. I don't know a lot about him. I've heard that he is very menacing and very intelligent, a capable, capable villain as far as Thor and even Marvel comics go. But this movie does not reflect that. This movie makes him generic villain number five. Like, he might have an interesting look to him, design. Uh, they cast a great actor to play him. And all of the ingredients are there besides the writing. There's nothing behind him as a villain, as a character. We literally know virtually nothing about his backstory or motivation for why he's doing what he's doing. He's just a villain who wants to take over the world or the universe or the galaxy. Generic, generic, generic. And it's disappointing uh, because, you know, you just you want more of it. You do. You want, you want a villain that you can attach yourself to. You want a villain that you can say, wow, interesting, fascinating. I get where they're coming from. Not so much here. Now, there is cool action. There is. I love the stuff with the portals and the dimensions of, like, things falling through, especially in the end battle where Thor and Malakaf are fighting through different realms and they're just continuously going through different uh, spaces. Like, I love that. I love it. Uh, maybe we should have got more of it. So who knows? I can understand why people don't love this movie. I can understand why some people consider it to be the worst of the Marvel Cinematic movies. I almost tend to agree, but it's still there's still good things in it. There's still things going on in it that I do think is important uh, for Thor's arc. I do think that there are things in here that save the movie from being just flat out bad. So... Thor The Dark World, not perfect, not even great, but it's okay. It's okay. Marvel, like, if if their worst movie is still good, then how can you complain about that? Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below, what do you think of Thor The Dark World? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's just okay like I do? Thanks for watching. Next review will be Captain America The Winter Soldier, and that will be it. 
I'm not going to do Avengers or Guardians again because I already did that like when they came out. I talked a lot about those. And I think Winter Soldier is a good place to leave off for getting ready for Civil War. At least I think so. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!